Hello everyone, this is Sheldon from Show Rock Art. Here's my hand waving to you. Um, I am going to be doing a bloom tonight, but I'm a little low on my paint, so I figured I'd just take the opportunity to show you um, what I use for my pillow. And that is this um, Glidden Semi Gloss Pure White. Glidden Premium. And it's always good to have an old can that you're not going to use. I'll show you why. First, let's open the can of paint. And what we'll do, got my little can opener here. To pry it all around. And you see that it's not mixed. It's been sitting for a little while. So whether you stir it very fast or very slow, paint will stir, so you have to be patient with it. But before I stir the paint, I'm going to show you a little trick. If you have a little knife or something, which I normally keep around, but I got a little knife, a little old makeshift carving knife for my fruit, but I don't use it, I don't really use it. Poke little holes around the edge of this so that when you pour your paint out and some of the paint gets into this little gutter, it can run back into the can. So, pop a little hole, give it a little bit of a twist to open it up. Just keep popping little holes Oops. around the edge of your can. Twist a little bit just to make sure that gets open. And yes, it'll go through slowly because I don't want big holes in it. Obviously, it'll, it'll, it'll mess up the shape of the can, but it will help the paint from running and spilling all over the edges, especially when you put your lid back on. So you give it a minute to drain back down. When you pop your lid back on, you're not squeezing all this paint down the side of your can. Now, a lot of the old school painters know about this trick. That's where I learned it from. Okay, so there you have it, right there. Trick number two. Because of aerodynamics, like I said before, in one of my other videos, that Pouring is not always about chemical reaction. A lot of it is about physics as well. For example, aerodynamics. So you have a round brush handle is better to stir with than a flat one because a flat one will create more drag. And as it creates more drag, you end up with more bubbles inside of your paint. And then you can't really use it until the bubbles settle down. But here, you don't have to whisk it. It'll stir. It's got to be patient. And I'm going to do this now for the camera. But I think I might edit this part out of how long it's going to take me to stir it. I know you guys don't just want to watch me stir paint and stir paint and stir paint and stir paint like a broken record. Just got to be patient with it. This technique or this type of pouring, sometimes it takes patience. You can't rush through it. A 
because you think you're going like really fast through it. And most times you think you're going fast where you think you see a fast video is because a lot of those videos are on QuickTime. So it's a, it's playing the music and, it's da -da 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 and then done, you got a picture. It doesn't really work that way in real life. You have to take your time you have to do more planning than anything else. Plan your colors, plan how you're gonna layer them so that when you get on camera or when you actually do your pour, as many of these artists probably already have, they planned out their plan of attack as far as the um, painting goes. They don't just wing it. They figure it all out. They say, I'm gonna lay an opaque color here, a transparent color there. I'm going to alternate my colors, dark, light, whatever, give, going to give the contrast, whatever colors they want to put, make dominant, they want to put more of that on it than the others, and so forth. So that's why you can't rush the process. The process is definitely uh, time consuming. Sometimes it's helpful, as I do with some of the other artists on here, I have a discussion, and have conversation about process. It really helps overall my work. So now let me put this one here. And I'm gonna add this to this one. And I'm gonna tell you why I'm doing this. So pour this into here. Like so, you get it almost halfway. So I got it about even. Yes, a little bit definitely came off this corner, clearly because I pulled it off the edge. But as you can see, these little divots right here are already starting to work. So, I do is because I don't like how thick this is. I do like to thin down my paint just a tad with water. And it really helps the flow of the paint. But you gotta stir the water in well. But this, by pouring it in here, I also allow more room in here for me to add water as well. And now I can stir this one a little bit faster because I have the water in it and I'm not whisking it. I'm just stirring it a little bit faster, but I got a round end of a paintbrush, which makes it easier to go through the paint. You got to understand it that this is a lot of volume here versus this. So you still want to check your trace on the top and how it flows, but you can always develop a feel as the pressure, how the brush goes through the paint to see how thick it is. And it takes a little bit of practice. So, now that's, this is a little bit thicker to get through. So I'm gonna add some water to this. Then we're gonna have to add the water later. I added about maybe a half a cup to this half gallon. That's what I eyeballed by a half cup. About four ounces, this is a half cup. I should just give it enough to flow. So, if I was to gauge it, 
half a cup per half gallon, so one cup per gallon, one cup of water should do the trick as far as, don't quote me on that, make, make sure it's right yourself, because for my paint, it could be that. Uh, for your paint, it could be a little bit thinner already, so you just got to feel for it. So don't take that as, as a concrete recipe. But as you see right here, you see how the how it just sank right back down into the hole? Now I can put my lint on it without paint spewing over it earlier. So, I'm done stirring this. It's got a nice consistency to it. Not too thin, not too thick. And I love these puppy pools because you can just set your mess right inside the puppy pool and you're fine. So I'm gonna put this lid back on. Cause I started to do a pour, you know, right away. But you see how I did that? And nothing spewed over to the sides as I put the thing on. This was already there for me adding the colors in the first place. But outside of that, once you wipe it off, you're done. And now I could also put this, put that lid onto this one when I'm ready to use it. So you put this back and I will get you back soon and be ready to pour. Okay folks, I'm back. And I just wanted to show you my palette. It's kind of subtle. That's here. And I'm going to, it's almost like sandwiched off. So I'm going to put a little bit of black as a background. This is, I believe, um, Byzantine, but I darkened it up with a little bit of leftover nebula star. So it's a little bit darker. I just wanted to use up my nebula star, but I wanted to give a nice contrast of dark to this, then to this meadow. In between here, that is interference gold with red sparkle mixed in it. Then I have um, Artist Loft um, bright gold. Then I have a dark bronze color, which I used um, raw umber with um, bronze to darken it up a little bit. And then I have a white selectivator. And then I sandwich it back off with the black. So black to black and these subtle colors, earthy kind of tones in between. So while I'm doing that, I'm trying to think of a name for it. The whole idea was to get a tiger's eye kind of feel to what I wanted to do. But as always, I got to add some kind of color. I just can't just go with the browns and the golds and the black and the white even though that can be beautiful and most times it is beautiful when I see other people do it but it seems like when I do it it just doesn't seem to work out anyway so let's get started and like I said before I'm going to do a blue tonight and hopefully this will turn out to be a success as well. All right? So let's start. Let's get started. So I'm going to put down my pillow paint that I thinned down with the water earlier. I like to stop it about there where it's beginning to spread and it seems like it'll spread overboard anyway. And my canvases, for some reason, this is not level as it used to be. I don't know what happened. Black takes over a lot. So, on this background, I'm just going to use a little. I'm going to kind of drizzle it on there. Like that. That's it. Then this Byzantine Nebula Star mix.
like the drizzle on too to let some of the colors come through. Mix up a little bit. That's just something I like to do. Not to have it looking like a Target logo. My interference gold with the red sparkle. I love this stuff right here. When Mandy from Hope Design first, uh, I'm sure Shelly probably did it beforehand, but I don't see much instructional videos from Shelly, just um, not much talking, whereas Mandy does a little bit of talking, so she kind of tells you what she's doing. And so that's where I basically learned it from, um, using interference colors. And they were amazing when she did those beetle black, beetle back blooms. This is Meadow from the Color Arts uh, Glass Wings collection. I can't wait to get the new set. I forgot what it's called, but it's so beautiful from what I saw. So all these color have, colors have a lot of beautiful shimmer to it. This gold is amazing. A nice contrast to the gold will be the bronze. And I want that closer to the center. I don't want to spread all out because I want it to be almost like a base to my white selectivator. And then, of course, I'm going to follow that with my black selectivator. There's my white on full spoon. And there's my black one full spoon. I always feel you should have enough selectivator to blow it out all directions so that you're not stuck with a little bit of lacing and a whole lot of uh, blown out colors. So, that's cool. Let some of those beautiful cells uh, take over. Give it a puff here. Some of that collect. That is my straw.
a lot of solid for being on there. But man, I love those colors. Just very subtle. It still gives me that uh, tiger's eye kind of feel to it. I should have added more yellow. I should have added some yellow to this. Got some time to collect. I hope this turns out well. It always seemed like the first pace I blow, which was like in this direction, all those beautiful cells come up. And it's like, okay, let's let's get the crumbs off the table on these side. This I mean this side here. Now, I know what I'll do. Uh, Karen taught me this trick. Waterfall acrylics. Go on with the finger. So I pull some of that up. Just once. And pull it up. Sounds like little balloon kisses. Put your finger. To pull some of that excess side of the beta up. That's a neat little trick. I think so. Now the center's not too bad. Did we save it? Yay, I think we did. I did want to have to drag a toothpick to it because I just love the way it just clusters these little nice jewels around it. Especially in this area here and this area here. I didn't want to mess with that at all. Wow, that's make a mess on camera, make a whole lot of noise, and do some modifying. So I will modify this little puppy here. And this little ugly shape here. Once you got one ugly shape, it's gonna become a bigger ugly shape. So you might as well have some fun with it, right? thought about doing before I just touched it all up and there was so much black there but I actually thought about trying out it is right through a part of it I was going to do a chain pull
straight line here. I don't quite like that. I think that'll come off. This looks good. I think this will come off. I think that'll come off. I'm just going to kind of swirl it up anyway. And straighten this point out like so. You don't always have to swirl it. You can kind of like, you know, bring this in like so. Just take those round, ugly edges off of it. Yeah, I will put a swirl there. All right. So let's spin this puppy out. And I will have my earth tones, my browns, my bronze, my golds, and little touches of the green and the blue, which is barely in there. So still give me, may give me that tiger's eye effect anyway. Let's see what happens. Slow spin. I don't like to spin fast. I like to spin slow to make sure all my cells not only reach the edge, but they don't bend all up and get that boomerang look to them. Houston, we have a problem. I see it. Can I get it? Move it. Can we hit? Yep. Shoo. Now I'm at the. Straighten that out a little bit. That should be fine. It was a lump. Unbelievable. That thing is huge, too. Where'd that come from? Let me try it again. Spin it. You can go faster as more paint come off the canvas. But you still should start off slow so you're not jerking your paint around. I think I'll go one more time. Let me see. Let me look at the composition for a second. Maybe if I tilt it just slightly to go that way. Let's see. It's not going anywhere. Let's spin. get greedy. See that line right there? I'm going to try to get that off. Slow it up. Come off. Almost. It's a slow, slow spot right there. There we go. Came off. Good. All right. So now... I'm gonna get you down for a closer look at the wet result. Okay, folks, this is the wet result, finally. And I love the way this turned out. Look at those cells there. It's got those little touch of green in there, the bluish green from the nebula star. Those gold and bronze cells in there edged in white, well, edged lightly in white from the uh, white cell activator. And then a nice lacing to come out to the end. And you see how these cells started to bend a little bit, like right in here, these few cells right there. That's what I was referring to when I said I didn't want the cells to kind of get that boomerang look. So I kind of like to spin slowly 
but out here they didn't, which I'm grateful for. So yes, this actually turned out better than I expected. Look at the colors in there, the, the blues, the blues slash green, very faintly in there, but that's okay. That's what I was kind of looking for. But overall, that I believe is, well, I'm very happy with this piece. So this is Sheldon from Shell Rock Art. Thank you for watching and have a great and wonderful day. Happy pouring. Bye-bye.